you a couple of pictorial images here just to remind you of a couple of things. This is the image we know for medical associations throughout the world. Pineal gland, brain's ventricles, spinal column, nervous system. This comes from old starfire ritual, is what we associate today with medical institutions. What we also associate today with healing and emergency services is the Rosicrucius, the Red Cross. All of these old symbols are that old. And they exist today in medicine, in healing, in emergency services, and in everything to do with looking after people. Caneship. <clears throat> so let's look at it from the very beginning, and let's look now at why Starfire was so important. Let's look at the principal and beneficial constituents that were eventually substituted by what became a chemical laboratory process. We've seen that Adam and Eve jointly called the Adame, Atabba and Eva. The earthlings were created clinically by Enki in Hershag. We're told in the books of old Shuma that, that this was done at a place called the House of Shimti. Shimti means breath, wind, life. Cain, according to Hebrew records and according to Shimerian records, was the son of Eve by Enki and not by Adam. His inherent Anaki blood was very, very potent. His wife was Lulava. She was the senior heiress to the matriarch house of the dragon, the dragon queen. Lulava was a purebred Anunnaki stock. Her sons by Cain were Atom and Henoch, better known as Etana and Enoch. Shumerian records relate that King Etana of Kish partook of the plant of life in order to father his son, King Bali. The plant of life was directly associated with longevity and with kingship, kingship. The plant of life was starfire. Starfire was associated with feeding the pineal land and producing the hormone secret shunned. The early star fire, just to recap, was not anything to do with the high priestesses. It was strictly Anunnaki, the female essence which they called the nectar of supreme excellence. The Anunnaki flower, or lily, was held to be the cup bearer. The cup bearer in grail law became the bearer of the grail. The grail was the Rosicrucius, which represented the star fire of the womb, the cup of the waters. The cup bearer, the transitor of the rich food, as they called it, was called the Rose of Sharon. And this comes from an old Shumerian word, shah, which means orbit, and on, which related to light, the orbit of light. It's just the rose of the orbit of light, the rose of Sharon. This significance is in fact venerated even in the Bible, in, in the Song of Solomon, lilies and roses, where the bride proclaims to the Messianic king, I am the rose of Sharon, I am the lily of the valleys. She is the bride of the starfire. The recipient king was considered to have become qualified for kingship when he reached a predestined state of enlightenment and, and achieved consciousness a state when his aptitude for wisdom and leadership had reached the enhanced realm of kingship called the Malku. It was from the Mesopotamian word Malku that the Hebrews derived their word Malkus, which meant king and Malkut kingdom. Only in recent times, 1968, quite recently, did the hormonal secretion of the pineal gland become to totally isolated by the medical world. The product of this particular gland was called melatonin. Many of you are familiar with this, I know. Melatonin comes from the Greek melos and tosos, which mean black labor, night worker. Those with high melatonin output 
actually react quite strongly against sunlight and are far better equipped to work at night. They are night operatives. They are melos tossos. Exposure to excess sunlight actually makes the pineal gland itself smaller. It lessens spiritual awareness, darkness, and high pineal gland activity, enhanced intuition, knowledge of the subtle mind. They also reduce stress factor. And so this stage, it's interesting to note how the Christian church actually demolished totally the true significance of the starfire ritual because they moved it into the realm of Gothic legend. The ultimate holders of the Malku in the old tradition, the dragons and pendragons, were Draco. Their conditioning through high supplementary melatonin and other hormonal secretions meant that they were people of the night. They were people of the starfire. They were, according to the Christian church, princes of darkness who thrived on the blood of virgins who were vampires. <laughs> Draco. Dracul, Dracula. As we meet here tonight, on this very night, Halloween, <laughs> there is taking place, maybe it's over now, I doubt it very much knowing these guys, started about midday at Boston University, a symposium of authors and historians from around the world to which I was invited. The chairman, Professor Raymond McNally, was called the meeting to commemorate the centenary of the publication of Stoker's famous book, Dracula. 1897 it was published. It's not generally known, but Bram Stoker, who wrote this book, was an officer of the sovereign and imperial court of the dragon. He's also prominent as an officer the Ordo Templi Orientis, the Order of the Eastern Temple, the most scientific branch of any Templar organization in the world who were originally with the Essene Therapeutate Blood Brotherhood of Qumran. The motto of this order is God is man. A lot will be discussed at the meeting today, tonight. The main reason for calling the meeting was not just to celebrate the publication of the book, was that Bram Stoker's own papers on this centenary are going to be published. These are the papers which actually tell us, finally, the ultimate codes beneath which the adventurous Gothic romance imparts the secrets of alchemi alchemical tradition from the early mystery schools. The book Dracula is a book of codes. <laughs>